Here we are, the RTX 3060 Ti. Almost double the frame rate you'd get on a Series X. I honestly don't know what to say. I was not expecting that amount of frame rate. We have another one, ladies and gentlemen. The brand new graphics card is in-house, the RTX 3060 Ti. And you're gonna be over the moon about this one because the performance you can get for something that is actually quite affordable now is really astounding. Not to mention, we also have the latest CPUs from AMD. This one that we're using here today is the 5000 series 5600X. So all of this is gonna give you a lovely RGB PC, stupid amounts of performance, but actually not that much money relatively speaking of course. In this video I'm going to show you exactly how to put together this PC with all of the parts featured, show you what they do, how easy the process is and of course show you those all important gameplay benchmarks so if you are going to build something similar you know exactly how it performs and what the gameplay will look like. But before we get started a quick word from our sponsor. Always at the cutting edge of PC gaming, Asus Predator range is now better than ever. Not only will you find the very best of gaming laptops, desktops and of course monitors, but they're now available in a very special bundle. Monitors, desktops, and selected laptops come with an extended three-year warranty for complete peace of mind, while gaming desktops and selected laptops also drop in a free subscription to Microsoft Game Pass for PC. Get rewarded today and learn a little bit more with that link down below. I'm really excited to see the 3060 Ti, but you're gonna have to wait until we actually get to that section in the build. I don't wanna ruin the suspense. The first thing you need to do is just grab your motherboard and take it out of the box. And the motherboard that we're using here today is the B550-E Gaming. This is a Strix board and this is a little bit more of a premium B550 which I didn't really understand to be honest when B550 launched but the point is unless you're going to be running multiple Gen 4 SSDs you don't need any more board than this if you like. This still has Wi-Fi if you go for this particular one. It looks good, it's got plenty of fan headers, RGB and you should be able to do some mild overclocking. In order to actually get the motherboard working with your CPU you will need to flash the BIOS to so make sure you grab a FAT32 drive Put the latest BIOS on there from your manufacturer's website and most importantly make sure your board actually supports USB flashback or similar name otherwise you will need a CPU to perform the update which chances are you probably don't have. But do grab your motherboard and place it down on top of your motherboard box and then grab your processor and here we're using a Ryzen 5 this is the latest 5600X and I do reckon that there will be one that's slightly cheaper coming out in the next few months probably a non-X but the single core performance on this thing is absolutely ridiculous and this is what's most important for a gaming CPU it's six cores so it's not going to be the absolute best thing out there for productivity but for gaming this should be all you need at the moment I think that this is probably the gaming CPU to go for so just grab this little tab on your motherboard pull the arm upwards and then get your CPU and just gently drop it down into the slot lining up the gold arrow with the little gold arrow or the notched arrow I should say that's on the motherboard no force just drop that down and then pull that lever into place. It's definitely worth noting that you do actually get a CPU cooler in the box. We're not gonna use this here today, but if you did wanna save some money, this is probably the easiest way to do so. But for now, just grab your RAM, and I've used this countless times with Ryzen, actually. It is Trident Z Neo. There's a few different size kits you can get. Here I have a 32 gigabyte kit, but actually we're only gonna be using 16, because that's what I'd recommend really for gaming. This is 3200 megahertz RAM, but if you can get hold of 3600 megahertz for a little bit more cash is what I would advise. Not essential though. Make sure you open up slot 2 and slot 4 and I love this RAM because it looks good and it doesn't really cost that much more money for the premium so it's hitting again the right sort of sweet spot I guess between price and performance and it's a very easy upgrade to make in the future as well. There is still a lot of work to do on this motherboard though. Next is to actually add this NVMe SSD. This is a Gen 4 SSD. It's from XPG. It's the Gamix S50 Lite. It's a lot faster than you can get from a you know more budget orientated SSD but this is way cheaper than some other more premium PCI Gen 4 SSDs out there. I mean, XPG sell them, you know, you can go higher end if you want, but I think for a gaming PC at this current time, this probably makes the most amount of sense. So grab your drive out of the box, realize just how tiny it is every single time I take this out. You do save a bit of money by not having a heatsink, but you have one on the motherboard, so it doesn't matter. You wanna make sure you're using the top slot on this motherboard, on all B550 motherboards, I believe. Take off this protective film on the underside of the heatsink. It would be very easy to miss this. This is what actually keeps this nice and cool. Then realize that you need a M.2 screw from the box. So move your motherboard and take that out. Insert that screw into the motherboard. Then you can grab your SSD, insert it into the slot. There's only one right way of doing this. Push it down gently screw this in, put the heatsink back on top. 
If you're going to be using some sort of liquid cooler, then you can proceed to the next step. But if you're following my lead and you're going for an air cooler, now is the time to get this installed. And this is genuinely one of my favorite products of all time. And I know that that probably makes me sound really boring, but I mean, let's be honest, I am. But you're watching me, so joke's on you. This is the Be Quiet Pure Up 2, and this costs anywhere between 35 and 45 pounds, depending on when and where you're buying it from. But this is pretty much all of the CPU cooling you're going to need if you're not really gonna do any serious overclocking whilst maintaining very, very low noise levels. But that alone doesn't make that one of my favorite products. The thing that's so good about this is that it's just an absolute breeze to install. All you need to do is take out the stock AM4 mounting hardware, which is pretty naff anyway, to be honest. Then you need these little like tube spacer type things just to raise the mount up a little bit. You place these over those four posts. Then grab your little mounting bracket, it should say AM4 in it, and then just screw this into those washers or those posts. Now you can install your cooler. You can see pretty slim unit, not really that much to report here. The only thing that you do need to be aware of is if you're using a used one like I am, you will need some additional thermal paste. So you just put this on top of the CPU. I do a little like five dot pattern. Gently lower down on top of the processor then. You can give it a little wiggle if you want to spread the paste, but it should do it for you. Grab your retention bracket, lay this over the top, then just grab two screws and fix it down. And that's it. It's just such a easy to use, friendly cooler that should be fine for anybody to install. And it's just not gonna give you that frustration that I think can be quite off-putting for a lot of first-time PC builders. That should be nice and secure. You can actually pick it up by this if you really want. That's how strong it is, ready to go. Hot tip by the way, don't put the fan on yet. Wait till you've actually cable managed your PC and make that one of the last things you do as it can be a little bit restrictive at the top of cases once you've put that on. So far so good anyway, now we can move on to our case and this is the tricky bit because I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this. This is like the Gungnir. But I really like what MSI are trying to do with this because it's not a airflow designed case. This isn't like a mesh front, it's a solid front, which will look better, I think, to a lot of people. But what they've done is they've still added plenty of ventilation. You've got some at the top, you've got some all the way down the side here. And if you look as well, this little gap as well has some ventilation as well. I think it's the R version that we have here today which does come with these addressable RGB fans. I'm hoping that they're quiet, they are quite cheap I guess which is uh, usually a little bit worrying but the glass itself is pretty heavy. The thumb screws aren't capacitive though which is bad so they fall off. See look I've lost it. I'm crawling around on my hands and knees now. And I tell you what it's even got USB-C. You don't normally get that at this sort of price level. And quite often you'll find you get one USB-A and one USB-C, but here we've got two A's and one C. MSI are learning very quickly. Let's get this thing built though. We're gonna lay it down flat. We're gonna grab our motherboard. We're gonna note that we have an IO shield already fitted. If it wasn't, you need to put this in the big hole at the back. But as all of our different standoffs are also in the right place as we're using ATX. We can just put this into place. This is the bit you can enjoy, screwing your motherboard to your case. It really starts to feel like you have a PC at this point. I remember the first time I did it and it was uh, no way near as easy as it is in these days. With all of the screws done, you can see we now have a fairly ready system really. I mean, it's not gonna change that much. It's mainly the graphics card and the cables, I guess the power supply as well. But this is pretty representative of the final product and it's it's coming along nicely. Spinning around to the back, this is a little bit intimidating, I think, for first time builders. There's a lot of cables here that will need to be plugged in, but they all go on the other side of the motherboard. Actually is very simple. You've got all of these different fans. You've also got the RGB for the fans. USB 3, this massive blue one. USB C is a lot stiffer and looks reversible, but it's not. HD audio, and then we've got our front panel connections for things like the power and then the reset switch. So find all the locations on your motherboard and then just start feeding them through. USB-C I think is the easiest one as it's absolutely huge and bright blue. So you can just plug that in. USB type C is actually just underneath it. But right down the bottom, you've got these tiny little headers that are very hard to show you. But this is for the power switch, the reset, and then the power LEDs. Grab these little fan cables, they're three pins. Just untie them and then you can plug those into the motherboard. Remember that you are going to need that CPU fan for the CPU fan that we haven't yet plugged in. So just find one of the other ones next to it and just gently push it over the top. And then there are two more slots down the bottom for the chassis fans. I know we are super excited about that graphics card, but it's not yet time. Power supply is up next. 
This is Corsair's TX650M. There's not really that much to report about this. It is gold rated for efficiency, which is nice. It will save you a little bit of money. The main thing really is that this is semi-modular. So you see some of these cables, the ones that you're definitely going to use are attached, but then you have flexibility with the ones you may or may not need. It's always a little bit easier to attach the cables now. So you're gonna to want to grab your PCIe and attach this to one that says PCIe. And then if you're using any sort of drives or of course for the RGB array that we're using here, you're gonna need some SATA power. So grab one of these little SATA arrays here and plug this in also. And then with the fan facing downwards, as this case has bottom ventilation, get this nice and secure with the four screws that are provided both with the case or the power supply. So you get the choice. Oh look, I almost forgot about this. There is another fan at the back because you get four fans included with this case. So plug this in and then neaten it up a little bit. But the reason that we're up here is to actually plug in this little CPU cable up here. I probably should show you that for all of our cable management, we're using the holes we can where appropriate because we want to be able to tie everything down so you have a nice sort of flat load area that when you put that side panel on, it sits nice and flush. This huge one, this 24 pin is the ATX power, AKA the motherboard power. So find where it is on the other side of the motherboard and then just pull it through and you can just plug that in again until it clicks. HD audio is all the way to the left and then addressable RGB, again, has three pins with one that looks like it's missing. So just push this on top and that's it. Now we can install our fan. So make sure that you've got the fan blades facing towards you. You should be able to see the Pure Wings text side of the label. Get these little weird bracket type things and just attach them to the fan. It's all completely toolless. Then just gently push your fan in place and these things just hook it on like that. Obviously don't forget to plug it in. There's that CPU cable right here at the top. On this motherboard it is actually gray. And that is pretty much it which leaves us with the bit you probably wanted to see first, the graphics card, the brand new RTX 3060 Ti. And design-wise, it's not changed too much from the 3070, but to my eyes, that definitely looks a little bit more silvery on the top rather than the darker material or darker finish. But pretty much exactly the same design really, so it is gonna be blowing air through the card, which means this isn't gonna be fantastic for smaller chassis, but this sort of setup here should work nicely with those three fans on the front. Then it should just exhaust everything out the back. Of course, this being a Founders Edition card, there is a little bit of a downside, which is that it does come with this 12 pin and then this adapter, which is gonna make your PC look a little bit ugly, to be honest. Grab your PCIe slot covers out of the slots. So we're using slots two and slots three here. Oh yeah. Then of course, screw it into position. Then plug in your horrible alien adapter type thing. And then that, once it goes in the graphics cards, should pretty much be your finished build. It's not too bad on the alien front, but I have also grabbed a addressable RGB strip. And then of course, plugging it into the hub down here at the bottom. So not too bad on the whole then. You can see it definitely needs a little bit more cable management on the back. So this is gonna require that little BIOS update that we said before. So I'm expecting things to be a little bit nerve wracking, but should be doable. Insert USB storage device into BIOS flashback port. Okay. Press the BIOS flashback button for three seconds until the BIOS flashback LED blinks three times. One, two, three. Wait for the light to go out, indicating that the BIOS updating process has been completed. Oh, 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 it's gone out. It's gone out, okay. It's gone out. So that did take me a little bit longer than I expected, probably about four or five minutes, but it's just a green flashing light. When it goes out, it's done. If it goes solid, it means there's an error. So don't rush it. But does our PC actually work now? That is the, the real question. Oh, that's bright RGB. I'd say it looks pretty, what, so-so? I'm not entirely sure about the half on, half off sort of look and finish of it, but you know, if, if this is the style that you like, if not really had, any other problems? There you go, new CPU installed. Looks like it was a success. And although it will be very nerve wracking for you if you have to do this, in my experience, it's been absolutely fine. If one USB drive wasn't enough though, make sure that you do have a copy of Windows lying around on a different one. Please don't use the same one. It will complicate things. It's not worth the risk, but grab it, insert it into the back of your PC, 
follow the Windows install instructions, which are very simple, won't take you very long, and then I will join you in Windows when we're playing some games. So here we are then, and I have no idea why I've never shown off the sort of desk setup like this before. It looks so much better, you can actually see inside the PC, and it's really easy to set up and customise actually, and I am blown away by this case. Not because I think it's the absolute best looking thing in the world, not because it has the best airflow, but I think in terms of value, it's really hard to beat because it's a great size, but you get four ARGB fans, that ARGB hub, and the thing is, they're good fans. Like, you can't really hear them at all. If you're wondering, by the way, we're going for a green tea with lemon today. To be fair, it is almost five minutes to 10 in the evening, so, you know, it's my nightcap. Here we have Forza Horizon 4 running at 4K, up to 144 frames a second, ultra settings. So is it going to be better or worse than an Xbox Series X? And it is better than an Xbox Series X. Quite surprisingly, actually, 100 frames a second, between 100 and 110 frames a second. So almost double the frame rate you'd get on a Series X. I honestly don't know what to say. I was not expecting that amount of frame rate. Here we are in Control, and this is a very interesting game because it is incredibly demanding. But technically speaking, you could play this with DLSS at 4K max settings and have the full next generation experience. We're running at around about 40 frames a second, which is fine, but I mean, it's not really what I would choose to play on. But bear in mind that this is not really a card that's designed for 4K. I think that's mightily impressive, especially ray tracing max settings. Let's drop this down to 1440p, rendering of course at a lower resolution with DLSS, and you can see immediately that frame rate skyrockets. Now we're getting around about 60 frames a second. You're definitely getting a few drops, but the Ryzen processor is actually really good at handling all of the physics, I guess, that you get in this game. The thing is, these next generation consoles are really good, but in terms of ray tracing performance, I just don't really think they're ever going to be there. So I'm really excited to actually see what this thing is going to be able to do in Cyberpunk, because if we can get this sort of level of detail with ray tracing, it is actually an option I'd probably leave on. Moving on to something a little bit more modern, here we have Watch Dogs Legion right at the beginning of the game. And this is running just under max settings at 1440p because we are running into a VRAM limitation, only slightly. This is with DLSS running and max ray tracing. And you can see we're currently getting just under 80 frames a second actually, which is, again, to say it's playable would be an insult. I personally prefer to play this with a controller. You might want to play it with a mouse and keyboard, but either way, you can see it's a very capable little card. And again, I'm very confused just why Nvidia, I guess, priced this card as I don't want to say cheaply, but I mean, relatively speaking, there's a big gap between the 3070 and the 3060 Ti, and yet there's not really a massive gap in performance. There's the ray tracing, look at those reflections. Oh yes. Isn't that worth buying the game for? <laughs> Which leaves us with our final game, and I would say my personal favourite, but I haven't actually played much this season yet, and that is, of course, Apex Legends. We'll have a look at the three major resolutions. This one is 4K and you can see that we're getting well over 60 frames a second. It's always a fair bit lower as you're dropping out of the ship. So on the floor now and we've immediately boosted all the way up to around about 90 frames a second. I'm going to die. This is a disaster area. There's some armor there. Will we get there in time? No, this is not looking good. No, he stuffed it up. I mean, I haven't stuffed it up. I got shot with no gun. Is that my fault? I don't know. Once again, I think it's your fault. Why are you making me make these videos? I mean, I could be playing this game, but no, I've got to be talking about all these graphics cards. That was a joke. Let's try that again, shall we? This time at 1440p. And now we're actually on the floor. We've boosted all the way up to almost 140 frames a second. So I think you can really see exactly what this graphics card is all about. This is almost like the people's choice, I guess. It does a little bit of everything. Obviously, if you're running 3440 by 1440, I think this will be on the verge of cutting it between a really super high-end, no compromise experience, and then a few games you have to turn some of the settings down. But this is definitely a perfect pairing for a 1440p monitor, no doubt about it. And so then, here we have the RTX 3060 Ti build. One that in terms of performance and key components, I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change the SSD, the RAM, the graphics card, cooler. I think the only thing really would maybe be a slightly different case for a more open airflow one if that was the way you were inclined. But if you look at the thermals, it's not representing a problem whatsoever. Let me know your thoughts about this down below. Do you like this case? What do you 
you think of the 3060 Ti? Is this finally the graphics card that everyone's going to be waiting for? Are you going to be able to buy one? Who knows? I would love to hear from you. I will leave my Amazon affiliate links to everything featured for this particular PC. Links down below if you want to check them out or of course buy something. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out Acer's epic Predator gaming gear. There's some hot new drops with extended 3-year warranties on a huge range of products and even up to a free year, yes year, of Xbox Game Pass for PC when buying a Predator Triton 500. Level up your PC gaming journey today and learn a little bit more with that link down below. Smash that like button if you've enjoyed this video, it helps out so much you honestly wouldn't believe. Get subscribed if you want to be part of the PC-centric family, not too literally I hope. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.